I have a lot of takeaways from week one of the college football season. There is so much to cover that I don't even know where to begin, so I'm going to try to cover the biggest topics, and one of them is the current quarterback situation going on at Ohio State. Over the last few years, the Buckeyes have enjoyed a lot of success at the quarterback position. Guys like JT Barrett and Braxton Moore were great, but it really took its next step when Dwayne Haskins stepped on campus. He put up one of the best single seasons in Ohio State history and became a first round draft pick. Ryan Day helped evolutionize the offense, and when Justin Fields came in, it got even better. Fields was an absolute superstar for Ohio State, got them to multiple college football playoff appearances, and then also became a first round draft pick. After that, we saw CJ Stroud walk in, and he put up big numbers in his two years on campus and was recently taken number two overall by the Houston Texans. Ohio State had three straight first round picks, and other schools such as Bama and Clemson have also had great success. Bama had Mac Jones, Tua, Jalen Hurts, and most recently Bryce Young, and Clemson had Deshaun and Trevor. Sadly though, sometimes these things fall apart. Alabama currently still has three players competing for the starting spot, Clemson doesn't know what they have in Cade Klubnick, and Ohio State may have just regressed a whole level with Kyle McCord. Honestly, Saturday's game against Indiana was pretty boring and very uninspiring. McCord did not look like the typical Ohio State quarterback, and it looks like there are a lot more questions than answers about the position. In today's video, I want to talk about what is going on with Ohio State. We're going to talk about Kyle McCord, talk about the status of Devin Brown, how the quarterbacks did this past weekend, and what I think is the solution to the problem. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover in my next one. Now let's get started and talk about Ohio State's quarterback dilemma. So dating back to last season, Ohio State fans were accustomed to excellent quarterback play. CJ Stroud was the returning starter, and he threw two touchdowns in their opening win over number five Notre Dame. He continued to pour it on as he had four touchdowns against Arkansas State, five against Toledo, and five against Wisconsin. He did struggle against Rutgers in early October, but from there, he continued on with big games. He had six touchdowns against Michigan State, four touchdowns against Iowa, five touchdowns against Indiana, and then eventually two in their loss to Michigan. Ohio State went 11 and one during the regular season, and then in the college football playoff, despite having nearly 400 yards and four scores, Ohio State lost to Georgia after a botched game-winning field goal attempt. Stroud finished with 3,600 yards, 41 touchdowns, and six interceptions. It was hotly debated as to who would go number one overall in the draft, but eventually Bryce Young from Alabama would end up being that first pick, and he went to the Panthers. Stroud went to the Houston Texans, and many are talking about how great he could be there, and now he has unlimited potential. There are the skeptics of Ohio State quarterbacks, but in my opinion, he was the best quarterback and will be the best quarterback in the 2023 NFL Draft. Going into this season, there'd be a three-man quarterback battle for Ohio State. There were four total scholarship quarterbacks, but two of them really weren't in the running. One was former Nebraska and Oregon State transfer Tristan Jebbia, but he was just there to be a role model. And then you had Lincoln Keenholz, who was a late rising freshman in the 2023 class, but he was probably too far behind and was never going to win the job. It was really down to Devin Brown and Kyle McCord. Kyle McCord was a five-star recruit coming out of Pennsylvania and has spent the last two years learning in Ryan Day's system. Devin Brown was a late rising quarterback who flipped from USC and was I believe rated the number one quarterback according to On3. Brown's ceiling may have been higher, but McCord was in the system for longer and it was always McCord's job to lose, but Brown really made a run at it. Just a few days before the season started, Ryan Day finally came out and said that Kyle McCord would win the starting job over Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz. It did take a little bit longer than many expected, as it was McCord's job to lose, and his connection with Marvin Harrison in high school really should have paid dividends and had him be named earlier. But it didn't end up happening, and Brown really did push him for the job. Coach Day said, quote, the Indiana game, Kyle McCord will be the starter, and Devin Brown is going to play in the game. I think Kyle has done a great job in the last two weeks of showing consistency, and he has played very well in practice. But Devin, throughout the body of the preseason, has also showed he deserves to play. I expect both to play, and we have confidence in both of them. Kyle McCord would end up getting the starting nod against Indiana, and Indiana had a quarterback issue themselves as they started both Brendan Soresby and Taven Jackson. Ohio State would play in the inaugural Big Ten on CBS game, and McCord did not exactly steal the show. Against the Hoosiers, he went 20 of 33 for 239 yards without a touchdown and an interception. He also ran the ball twice for 8 yards, and his QBR was 78.1. It was a very underwhelming performance. I believe his biggest play of the night was a post route to Caden Stover over the middle. And besides that, the offense didn't really get going at all. McCord didn't have any of that it factor. He didn't have any of that swag. And he looked lost, confused, and just very shy against a team that should not have caused a lot of issues. 
Indiana has had a decent defense at times, but there was absolutely no reason for this game to be that close and for Ohio State not to get going on offense. They have arguably the most talented wide receiver room in the country and the best wide receiver in the country, and they really had no big plays. At minimum, just throw a slant or a screen to someone like Marvin Harrison or Make Egbuka, and you're probably going to do decent, but there's just none of that. There were no big plays, there was no energy, and just a lack of confidence. Maybe it wasn't all McCord's fault, though. Maybe there was just vanilla play calling, maybe they were being conservative because they thought they were going to easily win, or maybe he was battling an injury. I really have no idea, but it's hard to give Kyle the benefit of the doubt, and Devin Brown didn't show much either. Ryan Day was very conservative with him, and he barely got on the field, and it felt like the Mizzou quarterback battle, and things just felt really off with the Ohio State offense. After the game was over, Cardell Jones took Twitter and said, quote, Reading some of these tweets about the OSU offense and the QB situation reminds me of two years ago. OSU opened up in Minnesota, and it wasn't the high-flying offense we were used to as first-year starter CJ Stroud took over. Be patient, this team can be scary. I actually wholeheartedly disagree with that because if I remember right, Stroud had four touchdowns and 400 yards, and this game was against a much better Minnesota team. But Cardell is being positive and optimistic, but I think he is wrong on that. Joel Klatt from Fox had this to say, quote, I was like, what? Hold on. Ohio State is really struggling with Indiana. I did not expect much from Indiana this year, and granted, it is a league game on the road, but Ohio State should handle Indiana. And I guess they did, but it was sluggish on offense, and it was very sluggish overall. Ohio State's 2023 debut was their lowest scoring performance against Indiana since 1993, and since Ryan Day arrived at Ohio State in 2017, they had averaged more than 50 points per game against the Hoosiers' defense. Going back to Joel Klatt, his one clear takeaway was the quarterback play. He said in his opinion, neither showed flashes of being capable of reaching a high ceiling, and he said, quote, if you're just thinking about it from a quarterback perspective, I did not see either of these guys show anything that would suggest, oh yeah, he's the guy. That's the last thing you wanted if you're an Ohio State fan. I agree with that. Ohio State probably could have opened up against Kent State or Bowling Green or someone like that, but they did get one of the worst Power 5 schools and showed pretty much no progress. Indiana did nothing on offense, and Ohio State did not move the ball. This was very concerning, as I don't think it was just a scheme thing or them playing conservative. Genuinely, it looked like they were just not on the same page. How does this compare to the past? Well, that's where things get concerning. Having never thrown a collegiate pass before his first start in 2021, Stroud did have some growing pains in the season opener against Minnesota. He did, I believe, have over 400 yards and four touchdowns, though. For the rest of the 2021 season, he recorded less than 300 passing yards just one time, and Stroud easily figured it out by week two or week three. Going back a little bit further, Ohio State's offense moved very well with Justin Fields at the helm in 2019, and he led them to a 45-21 win against FAU. He threw for 234 yards and four touchdowns. He also ran for 61 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Okay, so now you're probably asking, what does this mean? Yes, McCord is behind the eight ball in terms of how the other quarterbacks have debuted for Ohio State, but I wouldn't hit the panic button just yet. Breaking in a new quarterback is always difficult, and you never know, McCord could have just had the pregame jitters. They also have two more games to figure it out and get their confidence up. The real test will come against Notre Dame. This is the best Notre Dame team we've seen at least since 2020, and in order for Ohio State to win that one, they need good quarterback play. How I think it'll play out is that McCord will figure it out over the next two games and be good enough to at least make them competitive or be able to beat Notre Dame in that huge matchup. If he struggles though, we could see Devin Brown get a chance, but right now, I bet Day's going to go with the guy who's more familiar in the system, and McCord was a five-star recruit coming out of high school, so I do think he at least has the talent to be a solid starter. Can he be at the same level as Haskins, Fields, or Stroud? That's to be determined, but for now, I don't know. But what do you guys think? If you're an Ohio State fan, what do you think of the current quarterback situation? What do you think should happen? And what are your thoughts moving forward? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what quarterback battle or topic I should cover next. And don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.